Hey, how about you, everybody? Welcome into this week's edition of the Auburn Live Recruiting Show. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, Senior Recruiting Editor for Auburn Live on 3. Today is Thursday, May the 25th, 2023. We think Auburn is wrapped up with uh, the 2023 class, but whew, you never know. We're going to talk about it here. We've got a lot of great questions. We've got a lot of good topics, and we got even got a new prediction to put in. Our mm. Mr. Cole Pinkston has, and to talk to me about it all. Mr. Cole Pinkston, Mr. J, how about you, fellas? How about you, brother? How about you? Is that what you do to people when you're in the left lane? That's right. That's it. Hey, look, I got that from yeah. you. You keep on trucking, baby. <laughs> uh, hey, we're going to uh, get into a prediction, and then we're going to get some questions, some uh, questions from the corner. Boy, I tell you what, it's been a great topic. We've had some fantastic questions. We had it even. We had so many questions this week, so many great questions that uh, we want to get right into it. But first, uh, I know – we're talking about you being in the left lane. That's because you get them cars from Mr. Caleb Schofield. There, Mike Patton Auto in LaGrange, Georgia, folks. They're on Lafayette Parkway in LaGrange. Mr. Caleb's got new Ford, Lincoln, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, and even Hondas. Y'all know that fantastic used car lot he's got, too. Woo-wee! Mm. What a collection of cars. All those used cars have to pass a multi-point inspection before they, before they even put them on the lot. You want to put that car on the lot? Not yet, big dog. Take it back there. Multi-point inspection before we even put it out there. And then after the, all that, they're going to give you a th- free three-month, 3,000-mile warranty for all those used cars. And those new cars they have, woo, free lifetime powertrain warranty, unlimited time, unlimited mileage. And if you're not looking for a car but you know somebody who is, you need $300, send them to Caleb. He'll send you 300 bucks. It's a pretty good deal. It's a pretty good swap, pretty good trade. Give Caleb a call, man, 334-531-0996. He's there off of Lafayette Parkway in LaGrange, Georgia, at Mike Pan Auto. Give him a call, folks. Tell him we sent you. Okay, we're going to lead off with a little potential good news. I, call, I say potential because it hasn't happened yet, but Mr. Cole Pinkston thinks so. Cole, talk to us about this morning, uh, Thursday morning, you came out with a new on three recruiting prediction. Who is it? How good do you feel? Why did you do it? Well, it's Malik Blockton, um, three-star guy from Pike Road, Alabama. Sort of on the cusp. He's been back and forth between four-star, three-star. I think maybe he got to that level at one point, but settled in at three-star for now. Um, Good player. You know, I actually went and saw him Thursday morning in person. He has, in my opinion, slimmed up a good bit and Mm -hmm. maybe gotten just a touch taller. I think he said he was – about almost six four and two hundred seventy five pounds. I mean, that's you know that's the frame you're looking for. He is the younger brother of Marcus Harris, who's currently on the team. Um, Biological. Yes. Okay. Yeah. At least and, a half brother. Uh, yeah, I think maybe half. I'm not sure. I didn't specify, but he he talks about him as his older brother. So. Um, okay. That's all that counts. Uh, I really think that Auburn's been the team to beat maybe since he was in, like, 10th grade, okay? That's never been the issue for me. The question was more so, where is he on Auburn's board? Uh, You know, where does he stand with the coaches? Here's what I found out. Number one, Jeremy Garrett's been involved with Malik Blockton for a long time, all the way back to Liberty. Hugh Freeze the same. In fact, Hugh Freeze was Hmm. one of the main coaches he knew at Liberty when he went to visit there and got the offer. That was the guy he really liked. So, being an Auburn guy, first of all, Malik. Second of all, you bring on two coaches that he really liked at a different school and talked him into visiting. And now, I, and and I will say, there is some to do with Jeremiah Beeman choosing Alabama. Mm-hmm. That's your top guy on your board. I think Malik was under him, but I don't think he's all that far under him. So, really. There you go. I, I do think he ends up at Auburn. I it may not happen right now. Maybe maybe July, looking at that month possibly, uh, but nothing set in stone, and, and this could be something that stretches out for a while, but I really believe he ends up in Auburn's class. I don't think anybody will argue with you. Uh, I, I remember A-Day game, we were all standing there, me, you, and Christian, or maybe Jason Caldwell or somebody, but you know that kid came to Auburn anytime the doors were open. Oh, yeah. Malik blocked it. It was like, please let me in. You know, I, in, fact, in fact, he told me today, he's like, look, I, you know, there's nothing like Jordan Hare Stadium, mm-hmm. number one. He said, and I went to a lot of those games. He said, but I do want to make it to some other games this year because he goes to every Auburn home game, just about. 
We saw right. him every time. And he yeah. goes to see Marcus. He wants to see Marcus play. That's one reason. But he also just feels comfortable there. Uh, Malik Blockton. Um, you know, I tell you what, former teammate of uh, Mr. Anthony Rogers. The 2025 running back. And listen, I put yeah. out some feelers on him. And um, I haven't really gotten anything of note to pass along, okay. which leads me to believe that there's not uh, a lot of optimism. But God bless America. Don't quote me on that. But but let's just put it there. I, 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 it was not emphatically returned uh, in any answer for that. Emphatically gotcha. returned. Um Okay, Malik Blockton is in. Uh, I'll tell you what, man, real quick before we get to these questions on the corner, question, questions from the corner. Some people made the statement, opinion, that Malik Blockton is not a flip the script statement guy. Now, who, who, who's his finalist right now? Who, who's, who's, his, who's the competitors, Cole? Florida. Um, Florida's, uh, Florida's pushing. I mean, that's one of their, it seems to be one of their top guys, or at least they're acting like it. Texas is involved. Texas is actually pretty involved here. LSU, Clemson. Yep. Wow. I'd say Florida and Texas are probably the other two biggest threats to Auburn right now. Florida and, and Texas, okay. Judging by what I've read elsewhere, Cole, I would also put Clemson in that group. I think that's probably his yep. top four, including Auburn. Yep. And, it, look, if that's not a flip-the-script type guy that you're fighting those kind of teams for. Yeah. It, but, and, but, well, there's two types of flip-the-script type I agree. Guys. I agree. Number one is the guy that can come in and compete day one, and then yes. he's going to start, and he's going to be the guy. Number two is a guy who could be really good down the road. Yes, but you really can't miss on this kind of guy. You got to get him in the program. Yes, and to me, this is Malik. He's number two. I Do you remember we both, we all three. I think it was back when Keith was here, but they're two different kind of guys that Auburn's got to get. You've got to get the statement to flip the script, guys, right? But you've also got to keep the in-state kids from going to the Clemson, from to the Ohio State, from the to the Texas, to the LSU's. To the Tennessees and Sylvester Smith, so Auburn's got a lot down in state. Get the, get the, as many as they can, their share of the top ten, and then you got to keep guys from going to the Tennessees or South Carolina. You know where, and, and he would be one of those two guys, right? Uh, and I, it's amazing just how much how more coveted he is. At least he feels after I guess a spring of of evaluations. You know, that April evaluation period, coaches saw him in practice, and it seems like he's just – the buzz around him has skyrocketed. Well, like I said, you know, he looks like he's slimmed up a little bit, looks a little taller. Uh, he's really grown into his body, and that's something that, uh, you know, when when you're a guy that's been recruited since you were ninth or tenth grade, sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes yeah. you look good as a ninth and tenth grader, and you don't grow correctly. You don't, you don't fill out that body, that frame, and Malik has. I mean, he absolutely has. You see him in person and go, man, that, that's a ball player right there. And that's that falls along with what I've heard, Cole, with regard to his frame. The actual the inch and a half that he's grown. I mean, I, I think last fall there were some people that checked in or maybe even last summer where Malik was hovering more at around 6'1 and a half, 6'2". Yeah. Now you're upwards of 6'3". You're starting to fill out some. You look like a natural five tech that could slide inside and play the three, could play the four eye. And it just brings a lot more versatility to your game, to your skill set. And I think yeah. that's what's probably created the – because the, the motor was always there, right? He always yeah. played hard. There was never an issue with that. Very good power, good hands. You nailed it when you said he doesn't always get off the block very well. He's going to have to clean that up some. Uh, and, and I do think he plays a little high with his leverage sometimes, but he's a high school kid. Th those things are coachable and correct. Absolutely. That's the good news with Malik. Uh, the things that you point out are things that you fix in college. It's not something that you're he, – he's born with the natural talent. He's got that. I don't know if you all saw the picture I used. I took that picture of him this morning on the uh, 3 two, one I put out. Mm -hmm. Looks like a different guy, man. I was comparing that to some of the pictures I had of him when he was in like 10th grade. Yeah, he, he he's definitely filled out that frame. I agree. And if that's the base, okay, and we talk about this all the time, but if that's the, the baseline talent of your class, I can work with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's the kind of situation where if this is the baseline and we're, we're, we're working to recruit this kind of kid and up, then I think we're really putting ourselves in a very good position by going ahead and solidifying the commitment from him in, say, July. Get somebody in the boat and put pressure on other player, other, other good players to make sure that they get their spot as well. I like it, folks. Uh, 
keep following man we're gonna start keep at uh adding some predictions at all three auburn live on three go check us out uh right now 29.99 for six months five dollars a month absolutely can't beat it like a cute puppy we're gonna get into some questions man questions from the corner the corner being our fantastic amazing community message board at auburn live on three we posted a thread yesterday had some fantastic questions man we just want to get right into it uh sounds good cole is on uh, assignment there at the facility he's got a couple of players visiting today maybe leaving so if he jumps off you'll know where he is he didn't have to poop uh, although that might be a, a problem too uh, well, we're not we're not we might knock both of that out <laughs> <laughs> uh all right luke car 95 what's the likelihood that we land both coleman uh, i'm guessing cam coleman and perry thompson this is a good one for you cole or do we like one or two than the other uh uh, also, is there uh, are there others besides Craver that we are really pushing for? Mm-hmm. Cole, I believe you said Auburn is not pushing for Craver. And, hey, Zach, keep us honest here, buddy. We're going to try to do some of these within 90 seconds because there's a few that uh, we're going to spend a little bit more time on. So let's hit this one real quick, Cole. Yeah, Likelihood, uh, Cam Coleman and Perry Thompson. I mean, it's, 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 it's decent. I wouldn't say it's great right now. I can't okay. go that far. Decent. I, I like – Chances of getting Coleman better than I like Thompson right now still. Um, I know Frederick 90 would disagree with that on the board. <laughs> he's all about some Perry Thompson. Um, and maybe he's right. Maybe he's right. We, we, I just – my gut feeling is that Thompson sticks with Bama right now. But that could change, man. It really could. And we've got the OV coming up. So, um, as far as other than Craver, we know Bryce Kane. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah, a few guys. Uh, I know they're going to keep kicking the tires with Nicar, a guy that's committed to Georgia. Nick Marsh. Nick Marsh. Nick Marsh. Yeah, that's another one. Um, I, I really think that receiver board is going to keep coming into fruition, though, with those two staying at the very top, no matter what, all the way to the end. 30 seconds, Jay Head. Definitely like our chances with Coleman. Definitely do not like our chances with Thompson. I agree with you on Nick Marsh. He's coming in for an OV. That's got to be the other one that you're watching right now. Maybe you turn two on Mike Matthews and get him in for a visit. We'll see. But I think those are the four that we're really targeting. And anything beyond that, we'll kind of see. Perfect. I agree. Uh, Big Sexy, y'all's favorite poster. He really is. I don't know why people think we – I like like Big Sexy. Nobody has has beef with Big Sexy. Uh, Not me. I certainly don't. (laughs) How many top 15 players does Auburn land in Alabama? That's a good question. How many top 35 players does Auburn land in Georgia? Um, I'd probably have to look at the the rankings right now. I would say Cam Coleman. Uh, do you do you have that pulled up, Jay Head? Are you in the I'm, process I'm, of doing I'm it? Pulling it right now. So keep rolling, man. Okay. And I'll have this for you in just a second. Uh, Cam Coleman is going to be the starter. I, I think Mbakwe is going to be two. That's a negative for me. Um, let me pull it up right here. Oh, hell. I got it. All right. So All right. here we go. Jalen Mbakwe. Yes. No. No. Cam Coleman. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Perry Thompson. No, not right now. No, not yet. Jordan Ross. No. Demarcus Riddick. Not feeling great. Me either. Jeremiah Beeman. Negative. Not feeling great. <laughs> Kevin Riley. Maybe. I don't have him as a yes yet. I say no still. Joseph Phillips, yes. There you yes. go. I'll go yes. Bradley Shaw. I'm going yes on that one. I, I I like the way that one's playing out. Yeah, I'll go yes. Okay, Sterling Dixon. Yes, I'm I would go for, Sterling. I'm, I'm going four right now in the top ten. Then it's Jaquan McCroy. No. Traveris Banks. No. Jamarian Burnett is already committed. Yeah. Kavion Henderson. I say no. Mario Craver, I'm going to hold. So I'm going to say five out of the top 15. That's what I'm going to I got it at four. I got it at four. So four out of 15. Hey, a lot can change too. But here's uh, here's George's big sexy. All right, KJ Bolden. How about about I read them off and y'all say uh, yes if you hear somebody. Okay. Okay, Seviano just pulled up. Cole's going to hit that. So, Jay, hey, we'll take uh, KJ Bolden, Mike Matthews, Eddie Edric Houston, Sammy Brown. Landon Thompson, I don't see anybody in this top 10, J-Head. 
No, I think in the top 20, Justin Green was the only one that I believe that we were probably sitting in the captain seat. Nobody in the top 10. Then you've got Luke, Jake, Mark Linger, uh, Daniel Calhoun. Boy, that would be a nice one. Yeah, that's, just, that's the one. That, so that's just, the one to watch. Justin Green. we got Justin Green. I think we both have him in the boat. Yes. If, if we're going to do a mock class, he would be in there. Yep. Uh, let's see. Amir Jackson. Ooh. That's that's one to watch. That's uh, a Ricardo Jones, I don't know where Auburn sits with him or he sits with Auburn, you know? That's to me, it's it's where does he sit on Auburn's board? There's Ooh. so many safety teams. There's Jalen Crawford. Yep, that's one. Okay. I've got uh there's Brown Schuler, no, Kylie Fox, uh Jalewis Solomon. A lot of these guys are are coming. Caleb Holmes. Yeah, I got Caleb Holmes. I would put Caleb Holmes in there for sure. Jalewis Solomon, it sounds like he's trending towards Florida State. Okay. Um, presently, so that's three right now, with Daniel Calhoun being the one we're really mm -hmm. fighting for. I think that's the, the three out of thirty-five, and look, I think it'll be better than that. I mean, I really do. I think that's right now. Exactly. That this is so early. Let's right. see how OV season goes. Good stuff, though. I appreciate that question. Trooper Taylor's towel. Mm. They took him somewhere else. Jump back on here, Pink. Who is your pick as the biggest sleeper from the 2023 high school class or the current portal class? The biggest sleeper is going to be – I love this question. I, I figured it. you might. I mine picked out. I know who it is. You guys go ahead, but I can – yeah, I, I got mine. Okay. Can we do one from the 23 class and the portal class? Yes. Yeah, of course. Okay. Um, mine is uh, Sylvester Smith for the 23 class. Okay. I'm between him and Tyler Scott, but since Tyler Scott got that fourth, sc fourth star, I'm kind of not really seeing him as a sleeper. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yeah, but Sly was also a four star. You're right. He was, wasn't he? Hmm. Let me, let me think about this. Let me hook you up. Brenton Williams, Opelika, Alabama. Ooh. I believe he is going to be the guy at Jack linebacker here in a few years. I firmly believe Auburn hit on that one. I know that he's going to take some development, but the body's already there. The motor's there. I think it's going to take some it, it, refining his skill set a little bit. But I love that kid, man. I honestly believe they hit on that one, and I think he's going to be a guy that's going to be a double-digit sack guy in the SEC by the time he's a redshirt junior. Is J.C. Hart. Oh, that's oh, a yeah. good one. Three-star guy. Tyler Johnson is a three-star guy who looks – has an NFL body. He looks – I mean, he he's – Tyler Johnson is one of those guys you go, he he's a, he plays offensive tackle. Yeah. Yeah. That guy right there, he just walked in the door. I don't know what his name is, but he plays offensive tackle somewhere. I think you couldn't go wrong with any – so, to me, J.C. Hart – is a really big time safety prospect. That's where he fits to me. I know they're going to try him at wide receiver. You can't coach the kind of speed that he's got. But yeah, it, it, Tyler Johnson, 6'6, 305. I mean, that frame and the athleticism. Yeah, I don't think you could go wrong with any of those three. Okay. Good stuff there, TTT. TQ. Assuming uh, Denny 1034, assuming the class stays as is and you land Cam Coleman. Mm -hmm. Of the following three, who is your must-get? Perry Thompson, Kevin Riley, or Daniel the, Hill? Daniel Hill. Can I say neither and give you a different and give you a different answer? Absolutely. Got to go with JoJo. It, it, that is the guy. If you're, you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. You know who I'm talking about, Jay Lee. Oh. No, no, no. I, I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm trying to – assuming the class stays as is and right. you land Cam Coleman, all right, what does that have to do with of the following three, who is your must-get? Okay, I, so he's taking the uh, Cam Coleman as a must-get out of the equation, right? He's saying, you, he's saying you get Cam Coleman after that. Who is your must-get? Yeah. yeah. It's, Harry Thompson, me, Kevin Riley, or Daniel Hill, or – Joe Phillips is who – Oh, is for sure. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> A premium player at a premium position, you need a pass rusher. Absolutely. He's, he is a dominant outside pass rusher. You got to have him because here's the thing. I don't know where we go if we don't land him right now. I'm going to be honest with you. Dylan Stevenson trending to Florida State. 
We didn't even make the top group for uh, Jordan Ross from Vestavia. Who knows about Waller from Mississippi? Yeah. I know where we sit in this one, and if we don't land this one, I don't know what we do. I'm sure the coaches do, but I'd, I'd be hard-pressed to tell you who the next man is. I think we said this before, but must get on offense is Cam Coleman, must get on defense is Joe Phillips. Yes. Agree. But if I'm picking from that list, I'd go with uh, Perry Thompson. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, I, I would agree if you're picking from that list, Cole. Here, you're speaking of Waller, uh, what, what percentage, JC for AU wants to know, what percentage would you put our chances at for getting Javante Waller and or Kamarion Franklin? Uh, I think they're the number one and number two players from the state of Mississippi. Both will be back in Auburn in June, I believe. Uh, they've already visited uh, this spring. I, I still wouldn't have them 25, 30. I'd go higher on Waller than Franklin. Uh, gut reaction right now, probably Waller 30%, Franklin 25. What about you guys? Yeah, top four, top three. 25, Close. 30. Yeah. yeah um, I, 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 I don't feel great about either of them, if I'm yeah, being me honest. Neither. Um, but the official visits will, will be a big turning point for them when they take those. And, and being that they're both going to do one to Auburn, that to me is, is real. I mean, I really won't know until they get to that point. I'll put it that way. Are they, are they, are they the teammates? No, they're, they're not. Okay. One of them at Pecan, Pecan Yoon Memorial. Pecan Yoon and, and uh, Lake Cormorant, I think, is the other one. Yes, yes. This is a good question, Weagle 10. A lot has been made of Walker White's most wanted list, and it has changed and been updated some. Uh, which recruits do you see Walker White's most wanted list having an impact on? I'm going to be honest with you, dude. I don't. I mean, I think Walker White's recruiting some of these guys, and Casey Poe is obviously listening, and it's making an impact on a guy like that. But that's besides Casey Poe. I'd say an impact, if we're just talking about just impact. Not marginal. I'm going to land these guys. Sure. Um, I think it has made an impact on Casey Poe. I think it's made an impact on Daniel Calhoun. Mm. Uh, and I think it's made an impact on Kevin Riley. Because talking to him a couple of weeks ago, I, I got the feeling that Walker White is hitting him up a lot. Like, that's one of his top running back targets. And, and I think there's an impact there. I don't know how much it is. But there is a little bit. I will say this. I don't know how much Walker White's recruiting in and of itself is helping in this recruitment, but I do think him being a blue-chip quarterback in this class already for Auburn has helped us immensely with Cam Coleman in that recruitment. It has given you a leg up over Clemson, who has yet to put a four-star signal caller in their class. Not mm. not only that, the fact that you also went and got – and this is sort of off-topic somewhat, but that you went and got Peyton Thorne, a guy who's – 6,000 passing yards, it just says to receivers, hey, we're going to have you covered at quarterback. Don't worry about that. Yeah, I I think having one in the boat just from the recruiting standpoint of you can count on us having a guy that can get you the ball. You're right, Cole. We can promise you something that other teams can't. All right, good stuff, Wiggle 10. Let's see, uh, Victor F., how much would an 8-9 win season impact the 2024 recruiting class? 2025. Nicole, you're a big advocate of this right here now. Yeah, I am. And you know who you know who else I think is a big advocate of that? Um, this coaching staff in this building right here. Mm-hmm. Why else would they get 20 guys out of the portal, right? If they didn't think some kind of product on the field meant something to the recruiting. Mm. I really think a lot of what they're saying, and we've heard Hugh Freeze say several times, hey, that 24-25 class, those two classes are going to make us, make or break us. Well, he is spending time on those, but we know that NIL resources and everything went into this transfer portal class. Right. That tells me, hey, I got to get that that team on the field looking right before I can really sell anything. So he is <laughs> making sure that's going to be a selling point. I think an eight, nine win season would be a huge – momentum boost for the recruiting class and i'm talking 2024 i'm talking about if you if you finish november with eight or nine wins Mm -hmm. you're going into december with eight or nine wins and maybe a cotton bowl or something like that Mm -hmm. dude you you, you, look it's gonna be a huge impact yeah not 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 a six or seven win season but an eight to nine win season huge huge you know where else it's gonna have an impact 
on NIL donors. Mm. Sure. Because if Freeze is showing that he's putting their good NIL dollar to work, I'm not talking about from the regular guy like me and you and Cole. Right. I'm talking about from deep pockets that wanted him here in the first place. And now you're going to go out and you're going to show them, hey, if you give me even a little bit more, mm-hmm. guess what else I can do? So I, I think it works on all fronts, Cole. I think you got to get ROI from the very in the, in the day and age. Lincoln Riley has ruined it for everybody. If we were going to be honest, yeah. Um, in this day and time, you got to be competitive each and every year because there's too much riding on funding. There's too much riding in recruiting for you to be able to have a step backwards and to be able to take a step forward like that says a lot to a lot of the right people. Mm. Not, not to mention um, stability means something totally different than what it used to mean in college football because with the transfer portal and how fast you can rebuild a roster, th- this is no longer a three- to four-year deal for yeah. coach. That's not, the, that's not what it is anymore. Mm-hmm. It's, hey, if you don't turn it around today, see you. Ask Brian Harson about that. And why does yeah. Alabama recruit so well? Why does Georgia recruit so well? Because they know Kirby Smart and Nick Saban aren't going anywhere unless they retire. I'd say another reason, Cole, but that's okay. We can continue with this show. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> I'm joking with you, man. Jack Leonard wants wrong. to know uh, anybody over if the over and under for five stars in this 2024 class is one and a half. Mm. Um. Over under, what, would you, what are you taking? Well, I'm taking Cam Coleman. Yep. I'm taking the knowledge that Joe Phillips could end up being a five star. Okay. Uh, Perry Thompson could end up being a five star. Perry Thompson could be a five star. And listen, I, as far as I'm concerned, a five star is a five star on 24 7, on Rivals, on yes. ESPN. If he's a five star, he's a five star. He may not be on the on three industry ranking, but if, if one of those four networks believes he's a five star, I'm counting that yeah. uh, in, in this conversation right here. So yeah. I would go over. I'm going two or more. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with two, so I'm going to hit the over. I think two is about right for this class. Now, look, they may surprise me. I don't think me or you, and Cole, I don't know if you were following at this point, would have expected Chiswick to land three five-stars in his first class at Auburn. Um, mm. I think we all felt good about Michael Dyer at about this point in the recruiting cycle, and who knew, who knew beyond that? You didn't know Sean Coleman was going to turn into a five-star. He was a three-star, nope. nobody. Mm. Yeah, nobody even knew who Cam uh, – Excuse me, Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> our quarterback. Oh, Cam. Uh, Cam Newton. Nobody Cam, knew Cam Cameron Jarrell. Yes. He, Cam <laughs> Newton was in junior college, you know what I mean? Sweating to death out there in Navarro, Texas. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, Blinn. So, uh, yeah. All right, Jack Leonard. I, I believe uh, the consensus is two or more. University of Auburn, all, all lowercase. Outside of. Kevin Riley and Daniel Hill, who is the most likely to be our second second running back in the class? I don't think we know him, to be honest with you. I don't think we know him right now. Behind Coleman, think, who do you see the right receiver uh, board in order of priority? I think we discussed that a little earlier. Jay had mentioned the four guys on, on wide receiver. Mm-hmm. So, C- Cole, do you think – who do you think is going to be the second running back? I think we do know him. Okay. Um. And I don't think it's going to be Ronnie Royal. And we've talked about Ronnie Royal. Mm-hmm. Now I don't think it's going to be him. I, I think it'd be Elijah Hall from Tuskegee Booker T. Washington, which okay. is teammates with Joseph Phillips. Now, uh, I don't know him. Well, he's their quarterback over there. Yeah. And if I'm being completely honest, when I went to see Catholic and Booker T. Washington play this past season, I didn't notice Joe Phillips. I noticed Elijah. <laughs> That guy That's the kind of guy I'm talking about. I don't think it's going to be Daniel Hill. I don't think it's going to be Kevin Riley. I think it's going to be a, an in-state kid that nobody really talks about right now. I, I, I'm still going to stay on the – I'm going to say that Auburn has a shot with Kevin Riley. Okay. And that's how that's how I'll leave it there. But if that doesn't happen and I, I'm not feeling Hill, then, yeah, Elijah Hall somebody I'd keep a close eye. Okay, what if Daniel Hill goes to Tuscaloosa? Opens up the door for Kevin Riley to come to Auburn. Good. Absolutely, or Absolutely. vice versa. What if that's why? That's why I think that Kevin Riley's absolutely in play for Auburn. Yeah, and Hills admittedly on record as saying he grew up an Alabama fan. Been there like twenty times. You know what I mean? But here's the thing: Who does Alabama like better? Do they like Kevin Hill? I mean, do they like Kevin Riley better? Do they like Daniel Hill better? 
And then if the competition is against South Carolina for Daniel Hill, and I believe that they are the number two team right now, mm-hmm. well, maybe I like our odds a little bit better with Daniel Hill than I initially anticipated. But I'm with you, Cole. I, I, man, Jeffrey, I'm with you. It's just so hard to say right now. And then what happens with Jamirian? You know what I mean? Who can we put beside him in this class? It's going to be a very interesting dynamic as far as how this turns out. I guess what I was saying is, if I'm doing a mock class right now, Hill and O'Reilly are in my mock class. And yeah. I, I, would, me, I, I would go with Elijah. Elijah there you go. Well, I, I think he's a very dynamic athlete. He gives you a lot in the backfield. Um, and he's, human, I think, it's coming I think up. Human Cheetah. Human Cheetah is his nickname, I believe. Damn. He can move. For okay. sure. He really can, man. He's, he's Houdini as a quarterback, let me just tell you. Um, Cole, I need to go watch this kid. You've seen him lately, I'm sure, more, more than I have. How big is he now? He's, uh, he's kind of stout, if you know what I'm saying. He's not a tall guy, but mm-hmm. he's, he's got some thickness to him. Mm-hmm. Um, so playing running back shouldn't be a problem for him on the college level with size. And he plays quarterback right now just because he's the best athlete on that team. You know, that's how that goes. But um, he's probably about 5'9", maybe 180 pounds. Okay. So, decent size. Um, okay. Not a big frame, though. Not a big frame. Okay. Good stuff, U of A. University of Auburn. Mm. Must be an Alabama fan. Oh, Ocantos. I got, we got to get to Bobby Sweatpants' question, I hope, I hope soon. Oh, yeah. Um. All right, Contos wants to know, with Cyrus Dumas not being added, we have 84 scholars. Do y'all think this is likely going to a walk-on? No, I don't. I don't either. either. No. I, 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 yeah. We, we, may, we, may, we may not know who it is, but, I mean, there's months left before you can add another guy. I mean, it's not like school starts next week and that's the deadline. Right. Yeah. Right. So – I don't, I don't. I think they're going to absolutely utilize that uh, that, that that scholarship. Uh, Tyler Justice and, and, and goes back to Cole talking about thinking Hugh Freeze doesn't want to win this year. Uh, as of today, predict the twenty twenty four wide receiver class. Jay Head, Cam Coleman, Nick Marsh, Bryce Kane. That's your wide receiver class. Now, I don't feel so good about Nick Marsh. I think he's probably trending Penn State, if we're being honest. But I don't have a solid number two on the outside. Yeah. Being that he's the only one OVing right now, that's the only name I can really give you. I do think they really love Mike Matthews. I think they yeah. love Perry, Perry Thompson. Um, I just think those are going to be really hard pulls. So we'll see. And here's the thing. Maybe they get Cam Coleman and, and they get another guy and they decide, you know what, we'll wait and try to see what, you know, fish one out of the portal. Hell yeah. I think that could altogether be the case as well. But they're probably the best answer is Cam Coleman, Cam Coleman, and Cam Coleman, and anything beyond that is gravy. Who? Yes, that's exactly right. Get Cam Coleman and just tell me on, in, in next February who they got. Right. Uh, Auburn Addicts, uh, this is a recruiting question. Because who recruited better? Mm. The secondary or the defense line? Which freshman, Kay and Lee or Keldrick Falk, plays more snaps? Oh, I'm saying Keldrick Falk. I'm saying Kay and Lee. <laughs> and I think it's not because of the two of them. I think it's more because of depth. I agree, Cole. That's okay. exactly he's, he's, needed, he's needed more? Yeah, he's I'm the third corner right now. Okay. All right. I'm going to write that shit down, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Johnny Utah. Oh, Keanu Reeves. That's who it was. Cole, yeah. you probably don't know that, do you? Oh, I've seen yeah. one break, baby. Come on now. Yeah. Cole, you're too young for the uh, – what was it called? Point Break. Point Break, yeah. 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 No, I, 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 agent. I do know uh, Kim Reeves, though. Shane yeah. Falcon is my favorite role of his. Oh, if you like Shane Falcon, you need to watch Point Break, dude. <laughs> Seriously. It. It's got uh, Kiefer Sutherland. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, it's, it's Patrick Swayze. That's what I said. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> who, uh, who's the crazy guy? Um, they're surfers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're surfers, but I'm trying to think. He was in Lethal Weapon also uh, as the bad guy. What's the guy's name? Gary Busey. Oh, oh yeah. Gary Busey. Busey okay. is Keanu Reeves's. Uh, 
his counterpart. Patrick here. Swayze was, yeah. Yeah, Swayze was the, yeah, man. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, Johnny Utah, what's the latest with Daniel Calhoun? Um, he's setting up some visits. I don't think he's locked in on an Auburn visit, although I do expect him to. I think I read, see, there, there's Jonathan Calhoun, right? No, there's Jonathan Daniels, and then there's Daniel Calhoun. Correct. Okay, I get those guys mixed up. Daniel Calhoun. See, so yeah, I, 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 I believe he's set the visit for June now. I think he's coming in. Oh, he's from Walton. Yeah, it sounds like he's coming yeah, 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 in June, yeah. the tw- June the 12th. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one of those guys who I talked to. I think he visited like back in March or something. Let me check. Uh, yeah, he I, March 17th, I believe. March, March 17th, he sure did. Coming back uh, June the 12th. Jay, had you just say that? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I've heard this guy. From the OV, and, uh, which is crazy, man, because Auburn was not in his top 10. No. Why I said, really, I think Walker White's had some impact, but they've done a good job with Daniel Calhoun. They really have. AUBCLB, can y'all go over official visits that have been set so far? Sure thing. Uh, this is. Hey, Colt, have you talked to uh, the kid today from Florida? Has uh, he left no. yet? No, he's still here somewhere. Okay. He has an official visit set for June 16th, but I wonder if he's going to take that having visited today. Um, so if but if you do ask him, ask him if he's All still right. planning on doing that. Uh, let's see here, uh, Big Dog, CLB. If you go to Auburn Live on 3 and you click on uh, Football Recruiting tab and go down to Hit, hit Visits, and it'll, it'll walk you through everybody that's uh, that's got a visit set up. That first weekend in June, you got Jamonte Waller, you've got Daniel Hill, you've got T.J. Lindsey, the defensive lineman from Arkansas. Uh, let's see, that's in June. The, the next weekend, you've got Chance Robinson, Miami commitment, Jalen Crawford. There you go, there you go, there you go, CLB. If you'll go up there to uh, that football recruiting tab, and then you hit visits, this is what it'll take you. It'll walk you through all these guys. There's Justin Green. That 16th weekend is going to be big. Yeah. Uh, big weekend. I don't think Egan Boyer will visit, although he won't tell me yay or nay. See that Sean, uh, he, he's listening on that 16th weekend. Yep. I, and I listen, I put uh, Red Morgan, I think, for the 12th. Yep. That's, that's going to be Cam Coleman, too. There's Daniel Calhoun on the 12th. But uh, I think we talked to Dan, uh, Cam. I, I, listen. I'd be shocked if Auburn doesn't say, y'all come and visit that day, but don't make it your official. Right. Come back in December. Uh, so, cool. Good stuff, AUBCLV. Go uh, go check that out on Auburn Live on 3, man. It's a pretty cool feature. It helps me out a lot. I use it all the time. Ghost Faced. Can Hugh pull two out of the top ten players in his old stomping grounds in, this, in the SIP this cycle? I don't like Auburn in Mississippi right now. I don't know enough to say yes. Um the only one that I think we've got an outside shot on that's in the top 10 is Jamonte, uh, Jamonte Waller. I think if his OV goes well, you have an opportunity there to really make a move. Um, there's not really anybody else other than Daniel Hill that I think you could make. So maybe two out of the top 10, and that's a that's a very slim maybe, right? That's like pancake slim. Yeah. So I think only three have visited. There's Kamari and Franklin. He visited. Waller's visited. Both of those guys are coming back. Slide down a little bit, Zach. Uh, there was one more. Braylon Burnside, I believe, is in there. Yeah, Braylon Burnside. He also visited. And yeah. oh, there's Daniel Hill. Okay, so there's yeah. four guys in the top ten that I, at least I'm aware of off the top of my head have yeah. visited. Uh, and I don't see either for any of those four. No, I, I think. Probably the only one I feel have a positive feeling on out of the state of Mississippi right now would be Terrence Hibbler. That's the go. one I, I think that I have some positive vibes on. And then beyond that, it's really how do the OVs go and, and what intel do we get coming out of that? Jareo, will Auburn have over or under 14 and a half commitments by the time the season kicks off? They have five now? Five now. He <laughs> – Zach had to shorten this question up because he wanted to uh, he wanted to check me um, and say that we lost our I lost the bet last year on the site. But no, the bet was eight to ten. We had eight before yeah, Tony you, met no, you, you won that one. Now I did lose a bet elsewhere, um, and I ended up paying for that one. <laughs> uh, I'm going under 14 and a half. I'm going under. 
right now, I did this. I did the short math of guys that are going to commit that we're aware of right now. Now this will all change after OVs happen, but as of today, it would take us going a hundred percent down the board of guys that are planning announcements that we're in on for us to be over fourteen. So, as of now, I'm going to say under, but. I don't think that's a bad thing. I, I think if you can get around 12 to 13 guys in the boat this season and then you can close another seven to eight during the season, then you're setting yourself up to be in good position. And I, I think that's about right for what they're going to take with where the graduation is going to take you, um, natural attrition and guys turning pro. I think that puts you in a good spot to pick up another 10 in the transfer portal. Oh, Rice DP, this is a uh, this is a good question, man. A lot of people have been wor- wondering about this D line class, dude. It's it, it's it's very difficult, but a lot of this is because these guys are so new, and there's it, everything's so new, man. The transfer portal was so wham bam, thank you, ma'am. And you know, we're talking about commitments before the season. This is an Auburn program that's going to need some. Cole likes to say this: they're going to need some show before they can tell. Yeah, uh, and I, I, that's why I feel like. As the season goes and the and the success goes, and even if it's just looking good, recruiting will go. Uh, but so y'all talk about the twenty twenty four class. I gotta go ch- uh, plug in my computer. It's about to go dead. Okay. Well, so with regard to the D line class, Cole, give me some guys that you feel good about right now. So Malik Blockton, obviously, yep. we feel good about. Malik Blockton. I, I'm interested in this TJ Lindsay guy. I think there's something yes. to that. Um, and he is officially visiting. So that's somebody I like. Um, and, and I don't know if he's going to end up in the class. It's just somebody I feel like Auburn's doing well with right now. Right. Um, you know, I don't, I wouldn't completely close the door on Jeremiah Beeman. I mean, but I don't I feel good about it. I put it that way. So, to me, I, I'm with you, um, and we've said these names over and over, but Malik Blockton, <clears throat> I feel good about that one. Justin oh, Green? Justin Green. Justin feel Green. good about Justin Green. I feel good about that one. Terrence Hibbler, I feel Terrence like Hibbler. we're in, in a good position there. TJ Lindsey's obviously officially visiting with the top four of Auburn, Arkansas, Texas A&M, and one other. Is it Texas, I think? Yeah. Texas. Um, so there's some stiff competition for that one. And who's the kid from South Carolina? Downs. Marcus Downs. Marcus Downs. Those you know, are, go ahead. Th- there are a few names that I'm watching right now that Auburn could get in it with. Um, Nasir Johnson from Dublin, Georgia, somebody yes. I know that they went to see. Um, Omar White from Valdosta, who's committed to Colorado right now, somebody to keep an eye on, I think. Yep. Uh, so, And there's a lot of guys like that right now. There's just a ton. And it feels like we're so far into this, but we're really not. I mean, we got a long way to go. No, they, I was going to say, you still got seven months until the early signing period. Seven months. You know how much how much is going to change in seven months? Yeah, and you're talking about a, a new staff that just wrapped their first spring eval. Yeah, you I mean they they haven't even been here a year, so they don't even really know. Yeah, you know, I mean they they're still trying to familiarize themselves with all the targets and re rack their board of what they just saw. This is a good one for uh, for everybody. I, we love talking about Casey Poe because we think Auburn has a legitimate shot. Georgia Tiger 24. Um, Casey Poe took an official visit. His official visits are underway now. And he is about – I think he's going to about take about five or six in a row. He's going to reel off about five or six official visits in a row. He started this past weekend at Alabama. And uh, somebody gave him an RPM. And listen – I'm not arguing with anybody who puts in an RPM prediction for Alabama, but he did just come off a visit to Alabama, and he might as he very well might end up at Alabama. But no, uh, Georgia Tiger 24. This is someone you should continue to watch closely. Anybody disagree? No, um, I think Alabama's got a great shot there. I really do. I, if I were putting in a prediction, they would probably be the team I put one in for. But do I think he's still going to officially visit to Auburn? Yeah, absolutely. Do I think we're still in it? Yes. Are we the leader? Probably not. Yep. It'll be a, it, it, that will be a fun. Um, that will be one of those. Uh, am I missing something in the chat? No, no, no. You say what is it? This is Bobby's question. That's why I laughed when I saw it come up. Oh, here we go. Oh no. Do we have to answer that one? I've got one, man. I've got one. Hey, man, I got listen. one too. Okay. It, it, mine's rumor, so I don't know if it's true or not. Well, you go, go ahead. ahead. You, you, no, you you go ahead. 
All right. So what's each person's favorite Harson story? So oh, the rumor I was told is that Harson had a weight bench in his office. I can only imagine if Harz was actually like lifting weights when a kid came in, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, on his official visit to meet him for the first time or on a visit. To me, that in and of itself is hilarious. So that's my favorite Brian Harson story. <sighs> Here's my favorite Harson story. I, I, I don't have – this is probably the only time – listen, that guy did a lot of things wrong. I don't blame him for it. I blame Alan Green for hiring him. Um, however, I agree, I agree my, favorite sto- my favorite story – uh, was the wolf story. Uh, my favorite story was him telling Lenny King. Was it Lenny King? When he wanted a red shirt? Player, get the hell out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, big dog. I, I, I'm on, I, that's old school, dude. I, that's, I have no problem with that. I, you would not believe the people on Cole – Who's going to react to this? You wouldn't believe. To me, can you imagine a teacher telling you to sit there and be quiet, and you going, "Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't respect you." Right? No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do with you. Listen, you're on this football team. Your team needs you to play, and you don't want to play. That's fine. There's the door. Listen, that dude didn't do a lot of things that I agree with, but that was one thing that I absolutely agreed with. Right. So no, that was my favorite Harson story was hearing him tell the star tight end to play or get the f out. <laughs> my favorite story. Now there were some really good ones. Oh, involved, that's <laughs> involved some other. <laughs> <laughs> Again, uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, one one person told me today the one thing about Harson that people I don't know if they liked it. You knew what he was about. Like yeah. He didn't change. He was who he was, and that's what he. That's how he did it. That's how he was going to do it. So you knew what to expect from him. He was a jerk. He was an asshole to, a, a lot of the times. Um, a lot of people thought some of these coaches are, are the same way. But to me, um, him telling a star tight end to play or get the hell out was uh, was my favorite. Cole, do you have one, or do you want to go? Yeah, I, I, and, and listen, and Bobby hates that. He's going to hate it. <laughs> So that's why I told him he was going to love it. All right, I think you'll like my weight bench better, but that's all right. <laughs> I got several, man. I'm trying to pick the right one, though, <laughs> because it could really get out of hand here. But um, I'll go. I'll go with this one. This is. I think this is uh, it kind of floated around the the message boards. But from what I understand, this really did happen, and uh, to 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 keep, keep to keep names out of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. During 2021 Iron Bowl week, there was a recruit on campus, and it was an important one. Mm-hmm. And coaches were not really allowed to host that recruit because that would have taken them away from working on football that week. Mm-hmm. And I think I'll leave it there. Did we just learn about this? Because this was the, my number two. I believe this oh, was Is this guy oh. now committed to Alabama? No, he went to Tennessee, I believe. Uh, huh. But he was well, committed I, I, elsewhere when he came to campus, and this was a big deal. And coaches were not allowed to leave their offices to go try to try to win that because battle. of him. Because Harson said, "Don't leave your keep working on football." Yeah. Okay. Mine was Ryan Williams coming to the oh, Iron yeah, Bowl. Okay. Well, same same kind of deal there. And Harson walking right by him and and, and didn't even sniff him. <laughs> and and Ryan was like, "Well, hell, that made it a lot easier." Uh, all right. All right, Bobby Sweatpants. I know you really respected uh, the alpha move by Brian Harson to tell the star tight end to play or get the hell out. I know you did. I know we got a lot in common. You're old school OG, just like me. You believe in hard work, work hard work, <laughs> and a spirit that is not afraid. <laughs> oh, Ely. Oh, Ely. Uh, Eli Double Lot. What's y'all's favorite moment story you have covering recruiting? No. Um. I tell you what, mine was Tra- Trevon Reed, 2010. His mom just passed away. He committed to Auburn, and it was unbelievable. That was mm-hmm. my favorite moment. I was there, Thibodeau, Louisiana, and he went through so much to get out of there mm-hmm. and uh, to see him tell his head coach, kiss his butt, that he's going to Auburn. 
and right after his mom had died and it was it was a very emotional moment so that was for me trevon reed Auburn. Uh, Jay Head, I mean, you may not have an answer here. Uh, well, I was what's your favorites that you've that you've followed. Well, all right, since I've been a part of this podcast, since I've been a part of this platform, probably my favorite recruitment that we followed that we've covered is easily Walker White because of how much buzz there was for Clemson. Yeah, and then just the reaction from the fan base the day he said, "You know what? Nah." I'm feeling Hugh Freeze and the Auburn Tigers, and Hugh just stuffs old Dabo into a locker. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that is probably my favorite to this point, just because of the just the way this fan base needed that. You know what I mean? They needed to feel like Auburn again. For so long, watching us lose those head to heads against him um, and other teams of that caliber, this fan base needed to be reminded that Auburn's Auburn. Hey, I, I will throw this other – let me tell you something. One of my favorite moments professionally and uh, was was the Brent Calloway story and yeah. just the, the clandestine meetings, the really like uh, Aaron Brockovich type shit that I got to um, experience, the behind the scenes, all the – I mean, I, I was really exposed to the nasty shit in re- recruiting and the, and the, and the measures that – schools would go sure um just it just happened to be alabama on this one i don't don't think auburn didn't go do this stuff as well i'm just saying that i got to really peel back and see what went on i'm talking mortgages and banks and it was unbelievable and and i know nothing came of it but it ain't because it didn't happen right uh but but to me that was to me i, I loved that yeah, you're behind the scenes on Peaches and how that all played out, Jeffrey. It's one of the first recruiting stories I really remember. Like, whoa, this is this is not what I thought. You know what I mean? Yeah. It 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 definitely opened my eyes to how things have probably been done more oftentimes than not with regard to recruiting. And uh Paul Feinbaum called me a goob mm. because of that. I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> really? Jeffrey Lee, he's a goob. <laughs> I got you, goob. I guess when you look like Mr. Burns from The Simpsons, you get to call him. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That was uh that was that was cool. I have two that come to mind, and I haven't been doing this that long. Uh probably Jeffrey when when we talked to Messiah Nasila Kite and Kitty. Kite. And he said so I'll be moving in next week, and uh, and we're all sitting there like, is that is that a commit? So are you committed? He was like, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm moving. And then I'm sitting there like, okay, do I report that? And Jeffrey, you look at me, and you're like, let's go, let's go, get it out, let's go, let's roll. <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right, Listen, got it. You put that in the group chat. You wrote, hey, he just walked out and committed. And the thing that came back, I'm sure you were standing there with Jeffrey. Keith wrote, and I quote one word, right. <laughs> With a W. Yes, right. that was the response. Do it. Yeah. Okay. The, probably, though, my favorite has got to be Keldrick Falk. Mm. I worked that one pretty hard, and, and I don't mean for Auburn. I mean, I just had a gut feeling the whole time that he would end up with Auburn. Mm-hmm. I think I said that multiple times on multiple shows, on the board, whatever. Yep. Yep. And, I kept going to see him at Highland. Highland home. I kept going to talk to him. I kept going to talk to his coach, who I've now become pretty good friends with. Knew him anyway. Uh, and, and Florida State Twitter absolutely knows who I am, and I love that. Mm. I love that because I would go to the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game or whatever, go to practice and say, hashtag Auburn target, Keldrick Falk, right? And the Florida State fans would go, he's a knoll. What are you thinking? Are you crazy? Yeah. Right. Then on signing day, when he picked up the Auburn hat, puts it on, I'm going, you know, that feels pretty good. Mm. That one felt pretty good. They were out of your mentions that day, weren't they? <laughs> mm-hmm. They were, but they remember. <laughs> hey, who, who asked that question? Was that uh, – I don't think I wrote that guy down. Could have been a woman. Oh, oh, 
Eli, a double lot. All right, let's keep it going. How, how many more we got, Zach? I think that's the last one, right? Was it? Because that was a good one. That was a good one. Nope, here we go. Burner. Kitty's burner. Okay, uh, real talk. Who do y'all think is the first 2020 big fish bro Hugh is going to land? Well, we, got, we got five more. This is the first of five. Kevin Durant, JoJo. burner. JoJo. I agree. Jalen Crawford. Okay, I agree too. <laughs> I think Crawford's going to pop before JoJo, but I think I think he's close. Oh, Rev 007, yes or no? Will Auburn have one or more 1,000-yard receivers? No. No. You think it'll be spread out more? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and question two, hold on one more time. Uh, if you had to pick who would that or those receivers be, who's going to lead Auburn in receiving this year? Shane Hooks. Okay. Jameer and Shorter. Jair Shorter. Jair Shorter. Not Jair. I'll go Camden Brown. Okay. <laughs> Good pick. I had a feeling you might go with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, Dust wants to know, uh, was NIL available playing time or another factor most important in our transfer portal hall? Uh, I would say transfer. All of the above. I, I would say all of the above. I would say uh, playing time, though. I, I want to keep hitting on this, though. I really think a lot of NIL resources were used here. I really oh. think – and I don't have any – I don't have numbers or anything on that. I just think I think a lot of it was focused on this. Hey, let's get this and then close the door on it when it's over and move right back to high school. All the while, your coaches are doing everything they can with the high school classes. But when they get that little aid from NIL, I really think that we'll see a little bit more momentum with these high school with, with the high school. I, I agree. I agree. All right, good. Uh let's go. Uh Tiger five three zero. Oh, Five three zero. I said it right. Uh, over under prediction for the amount of commits at the end of June. The end of June. Um, over under prediction. Well, they at five now. I go eight. Eight. Ten. I would. I would say eight to ten. I'm gonna yeah. go ten. That was Tigers five three zero. All right, Auburn Hawk, AU Hawk. I'm trying to write these people down. Who rounds out Auburn's football's all time four by one hundred track, track team? Okay. So, Bo uh, Jackson, Harry Adams, <laughs> and Terry McCaleb. Oh, oh Terry McCaleb. What about Anthony? Uh, Anthony, uh, yeah. Anthony oh, Schwartz. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony Schwartz. Yeah. So Bo Jackson, Harry Adams, Anthony Schwartz, and Terry McCaleb. If you're not winning a four by one hundred relay, relay with that team, and I tell you what, what? snub off the bench is Corey Grant. Oh, Noah for sure. No, yeah. yeah. Noah was an absolute, but he was a hurdles guy, right? Or a long jump. Yeah, I think he was, but he he was a. I think he had a really good 100 meter time, if I remember correctly. But he's just one of those guys that can do it. He's you know? a freak athlete. Yeah. yeah, good stuff. I like those kind of questions. Me too. Uh, was that the final one? There we go. All right, I, I love those questions, man. I guess you're talking to different topics that you might not have thought about, man. And uh, we appreciate everybody uh, participating. In that 25 good questions. We're going to do that again next week, man. This is a great time to do this during the uh, the slow period. Uh, and enjoy. It's fascinating to me. Fascinating what people come up with. Good stuff. Good insight too. Cole, you about to get some dudes? I see a line of what looked to be pretty strong athletes walking this way right oh. now. Oh. So I believe Caleb Odom is part of that group. Okay. Maybe they won't stay long. You know. <laughs> <laughs> a, a large group typically doesn't. They'll they'll come and they'll they'll go. Either way, man, I'd get out of there before long. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll play it, it again. It ain't like the kid it loaded up and drove to Auburn today to visit. Okay, Auburn's not in his top ten. I don't know if you can see him, but oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. look like ants marching out there. <laughs> I don't Antonio, even know if that's allowed in podcast. World. Antonio Cromartie Jr. Part of that. Uh, Oh, yeah, he sure is. And Juju Lewis. Juju Lewis, yep. Uh, good stuff, man. Uh, hey, a couple of uh, – I got a couple of uh, – how about yous? Does okay. anybody? Uh, yeah. I'm going to go Bobby Sweatpants this week. I think Bobby's had a good week. Um, he sure has. Forward as far as some of the, uh, the commentary that he's provided, he always gets a good laugh out of me. 
Um, so I'm going to go with Bobby Sweatpants this week. If I were a fan, I would be like Bobby Sweatpants. And, 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 and moderators would, would hate me. I would be just like him. I really would. <laughs> He, he he's a pretty cool guy, but he's kind of a dick, you know. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's that's how I would be, for sure. Hey, you know, yeah, I, I would yeah. say Bobby just has his opinion about things, <laughs> and he lets you know it. That's for sure. Oh, uh, all right. Hey, Bobby got a how about you last week? So this is two in, two in a row for him. Um, give me Cole, Bobby. Who you got, Beto? Okay, Bobby Thompson. All right. And uh, two, two five one tiger, uh, two five one tiger. We're going to throw in some Johnny Knox as well. Yeah, Johnny is, Knox. Oh seven. You that text I sent you a coal on the grill over there. Oh yeah, <laughs> Carrollton boys. I like them, Carrollton boys. All right, I got a couple. Uh, I got burnt orange fifty six. How about you to burnt orange fifty six? How about you to Auburn dad for life? How about you to J Taylor three three four? Who's keeping me honest during the Cyrus Dumas? And a big how about you to Christian Clemente. There you go. Big how about you to Christian Clemente uh, with, with the Cyrus Dumas stuff. Uh, we, we, we talked it out, and I told him, I was like, dude, I don't blame you. I would have been doing the same thing. Because I, I, I was I was kind of a dicky. I, I, was, I was 100% certain on the Cyrus stuff, and, uh, and, and it turned out to be wrong. I was wrong. Christian handled that really good, too, man. Appreciate him. He's a good friend of mine. Um, that's all I've got. How about you to burnt orange 56 Auburn dad for life. Jay Taylor, 334 Christian. How about you to Bobby sweatpants, two, five, one tiger and Johnny Knox. Oh, seven folks. Great show, man. We're going to keep posting these questions during this slow period during this, uh, so this lull, the summer lull, it'll kick back up in June, but, uh, enjoy it, man. We appreciate all these questions and, uh, we certainly appreciate everybody listening and watching. Look for us Sunday night, six 30. We're going to be at back for the live call in show. Whew. We'll be back, man. We appreciate it. For Jay Head, for Cole, for Zach in the back, I'm Jeffrey Lee, man. Y'all stay out of that left lane. See ya.